Welcome back to CS11. This is the first part of a solution for lab 14b, where we're going to code a remove min function that removes the minimum value from a partially filled array. First, let me remind you what a partially filled array is. This is a key concept. When you declare an array, such as here, an integer array called data, let's make that size 5,000, Often, you won't know exactly how much information that you're going to want to store in that array. And so this array that we've created here of size 5,000, so that's elements 0 through 4,999, this array here can store 5,000 pieces of data. But what if the user only wants to enter 100 or 1,000 pieces of data? And so that's where the idea of a partially filled array comes in, an array that's partially filled with data, and then part of the space of the array is unused. When that happens, you always want to have the data be contiguous, starting from the zero position, and so some portion of the array is filled with data, and then some portion of the array is filled with garbage. Then we need a, a variable that tells us how much data is in the array. Notice that's different than the value that tells us what the size of the array is. That value is sometimes referred to as a capacity, by the way. So we need an additional variable that tells us what portion of the array is filled with data. Often that variable is referred to as size. So, if we were going to pass an array with some data in it to a function to perform some operation on it, such as removing the minimum, when we pass the array, what we need to send isn't the capacity, because the function isn't going to care about working in this portion of the array, but the size of the data, or how much data there is, so that whatever function that we code can operate on this portion of the array. Okay, well, let's get started coding a function called void remove min. All right, well, first I'll put in a prototype. And it doesn't specify what type of data this array is going to hold. It doesn't really matter for the purposes of this exercise. Let's say that we're going to be passing in an int array. Now, the prototype for an int array can be int with array brackets, or more commonly you might see an int star, which will also mean the same thing. Okay, and then an int. Now that's the minimum prototype where we have the types of our parameters that we're going to be passing in. We could also add in a name. So here we could say int So here I've added the name of the array and the name of a parameter. This function is going to be trickier than some of the others we've written. So let's add at least a brief description. Remove the minimum value from a partially filled array A with size, a size. Okay. Oh, and let's spell that right. It's important to spell things correctly. You know, we don't want to undermine the confidence of anyone looking at our program. Okay, so now we're going to code our function here. Remove min, and it's going to take an integer array named a, and the size of the array. All right, first let's check a size, and if a size is less than or equal to zero, return. Oh, and I spelled min there incorrectly also. Let's fix that. Okay, now this is a void function, so it doesn't return anything in particular. So notice this return statement doesn't indicate that it's returning a value, just that it's returning. Also, notice here I didn't use braces. I could have. Most control structures, uh, the braces are optional. And if you put in braces, you can list multiple commands. But if you leave them out, 
then that control structure, such as this if command, only applies to the next command. So we could, if we preferred, list it this way. Okay, so now at this point we know that a size is greater than zero, so that there are some values in there and that there will be at least one value to remove. So we're going to want to go through this array and find the minimum value, but more than that, we're going to want to find where the minimum value is located, because if we know that the minimum value is a two, but we don't know where it is, then that doesn't really help us make progress towards the solution. So let's create a minimum variable and rather than selecting an arbitrary value to initialize it, I would prefer to initialize it with the first piece of data in the array. And they're going to keep track of the minimum value that I found and where I found it. And then initially the first value in the array or the array at position zero becomes the minimum and then we're going to go through and every subsequent value is going to get a chance to become the new minimum. So let's code that. So a for loop for int i equals 1 i is less than a size i plus plus and notice here I'm starting at 1 that's because the min is already set to zero, so we don't have to start with zero again. We can just start with every subsequent value. And here I'll say, if a of i is less than the minimum, then that means we found a value in the array that's smaller than the value that we previously thought was going to be our minimum. And so then we'll say min equals a i, and then also we'll remember where we found it. So min index equals i. Okay, so at this point in the code here, we now know where is the value that we want to get rid of. Okay, so let me show you what that's going to look like. So we have this array a and some collection of values. We have this variable a size. And so a size, of course, can differ from one program run to the other. So we don't always know exactly how many values they're going to be. And min index will be some value in this range of 0 to uh, a size minus 1. That is the minimum value that we want to get rid of. Now, there's two ways, basically, that we can get rid of this value. And one is if we want to say min index is 2, let's pretend, get rid of this value here, is to copy each value back one position and then subtract one from a size. Since a size is counting how many pieces of data we have and also showing us where that kind of logical split in the array is between which side of the array has data and which has garbage values, we subtract one from a size to compensate for the fact that we're removing one value. The second option, and the one that I'm going to code here, is if that we found the value that we want to get rid of, so remove it from the data, instead of deleting it, we're going to overwrite it with the last value from our data side of our array, and then subtract one from a size. So this value here, which overwrote the value we wanted to get rid of, then is moved into the garbage side, of the array and not consider one of our values that we're using anymore. And the value that we want to got, get rid of has been replaced by the value that we wanted to keep. And so in effect it's been removed from the array. So this is what I'm going to code right now. One thing you'll notice though, this does change the order 
of the values that are in the array. And the problem didn't specify whether we were allowed to do that. So perhaps that's a great solution because it doesn't do all of these extra copying operations. Or maybe it's not a good solution. We probably maybe have to have more information to find out. But it's a very clever technique if you're allowed to do that. Okay, so let's overwrite array A at the minimum index position is equal to A at position A size minus 1 and then A size minus minus. The next point I want to make is what if the value that we wanted to delete was the one right at the end? So here's A size. And what if we wanted to get rid of this one? Notice in that case, min index is equal to A size minus one. And so that this line of code here would have the effect of taking this value and writing it on top of itself, which would have no effect. It's not going to cause a problem, so therefore we don't have to check for that condition because that condition doesn't really affect the correctness of, of our code. In that case, we wouldn't have to do this particular step, but in order to test to see if we need to not do that step would be more work than just doing it. So in this case, we'll just leave that as is. Now, we're going to need to make one more change for this function to work. And notice that here int a size is just being passed by value. It's not a reference parameter. So that means that the a size variable as it exists in here is not the same value that's passed into us. So that when we adjust a size by 1, we're only going to change our copy. Here in main, a size will remain its original value. So we're going to need to make this a size variable a reference parameter, which we do by adding the ampersand. We have to make sure it matches there also. And now this integer variable will be connected to whatever integer variable we pass in. Now notice that I didn't make the array a reference parameter with the ampersand. And that is because arrays in C++ are always passed by reference. So it already is automatically a reference parameter. So here in this function, when I modify this array, it's modifying the original array. So you don't add an ampersand there. And you OK, well, let's just make a quick test array here. Int my array. And I'll use this syntax to give it some initial values. 2, 4, 5, 1, 3, 7. And then let's call our remove min function. Remove min. And the array is called my array. And oh, let's put in a size here. Int size equals 6. OK, so we'll pass in the array and the number of pieces of data in there. And then when we return from that function, let's print out the contents of the array. For int i equals 0, i is less than size, i plus plus, c out my array i, and then a space, and then we will c out and end line. Okay, so there's our completed program. That's a lot of program to write without compiling and testing, so I hope it works the first time. We'll be, I'll consider myself lucky if it does. And, oh, let's look, I made one typo there. Past the ones I had already caught while I was coding. All right, let's try again. And run, and there we see our array has 24573. And notice the smallest value, the 1, has been removed. Let's make there the 5 into a negative 5. So now it's the smallest value. And test again. Now it's not an exhaustive test, but looks like we've got our working function. 
Okay, so there's our answer for problem 6.5.